This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutsky is here to answer your questions and help you plan for a later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutsky. And we are now joined by Mr. Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan. We call the segment Ask Todd because it's your chance to ask Todd your question. So, if you've got an estate planning question, maybe it's about you, maybe it's a family member, maybe you haven't done any estate planning or you're just looking to get started, the studio line here is 888-205-2263. That is the number to call in order to ask Todd your question live on air. That phone number again is 888 888- 205-2263. So please get calling and we will get to your calls as soon as possible. Again, that phone number is 888-205-2263. Mr. Lutsky, how are you today? I am never better than you. Uh, good. I was talking to another lawyer friend of mine yesterday. Yeah? You have a friend that's a lawyer? That's strange. Big fan of the band, you too. Oh yeah? Me too. Very pro bono. Ah, I love it. <laughs> that's so. Great. I want to talk to you a little bit today about irrevocable trusts as they relate to estate planning and, and Medicaid planning and things like that. Sure. Talk to me about just th- the list of different benefits of using irrevocable trusts in an estate plan. What do they actually help a family accomplish? So, you know, and, and this is this is very interesting because many people, first of all, feel like the irrevocable trust is is a, a big loss of control a big you know i'm i'm it's not mine anymore kind of feeling and i i think they need to realize that that's that's just not the case and and the way i think the best way to sort of explain that would be that you know there's a spectrum of irrevocable trust there's many different kinds of irrevocable trusts and on that spectrum there is some that are very much uh, you know, where you have no control. And they're right. You know, this is not my asset anymore. And then there's another end of the spectrum where th- there's a lot of control, a lot of feeling that, you know what, it doesn't feel any different to me that it's in this trust because I still feel like I own it and I control it even though the trust does. So it's this a way of making it an incomplete gift for gift tax purposes, but a completed transfer for Medicaid protection purposes and avoidance of probate. So, you know, I, I think they need to understand that once it's in there, it does avoid probate. It does protect it from the nursing home. It does uh, shelter assets from estate taxes if you have a tax liability uh, in, that, in that, depending on the size of your estate. And most importantly, it really helps you feel like it's still yours. So, you know, like your home, you're living there, you're paying your bills, you can sell your house, you can buy another house. I mean, those are just some of the benefits that that come from it, you know, with regard to a house in there or even a, a vacation home. So I hope that helps. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask Todd live on air, the studio line here is 888-205-2263. That's the number to call to ask Todd your question. Todd, what about the downsides of an irrevocable trust? Like, what is there any downside to employing one? Well, you know, the, I don't really see them. I like to tell people when we start the planning, and of course I prove it out as we go through an hour and a half or so meeting uh, detailing how they work, uh, that that there really is no downside because you're about 98% in control. And they say, well, what's the 2%? Well, you know, I guess the one issue is, well, like, I just gave you an example with a house, right? And I told you all the things you can do with a house, and you say, well, wow, I can do all those things with my house today. I could live there, pay the bills, I could sell it, I could buy another house, I could even rent it and collect the rent. Yeah, you could do all that. Well, what's the one thing you can't do, Todd? There's gotta be a downside, right? There's gotta be something you can't do. Yeah, you can't really refinance your mortgage. Assuming you have a mortgage, you can't refinance it uh, without resetting the five-year clock, okay? So can you do it? Yes, but I can't, I'd reset my clock, but mostly people doing Medicaid planning don't even have a mortgage. And even if you did have a mortgage, 
you keep a life estate to preserve that mortgage, which is something we really need to spend some time on, but you keep a life estate to preserve the mortgage, and you can also preserve a home equity line of credit that allows you to tap it if you need to going forward, so mm. maybe that negative isn't so much of a negative after all. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. We've got a quick break coming up, but we're going to get to your questions on the back end of it. Again, if you have a question for Todd, the phone number here is 888-205-2263. One more time, it's 888-205-2263. We're going to take a quick break, and then right when we return, it's your questions with Todd. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at 1030, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. You're listening to Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. All right, time to get right to your questions with Todd Lutsky. First up, we've got Philip on the Cape. Philip, what's your question for Todd Lutsky? Hello, uh, Todd. Um, we have an irrevocable trust that you nicely drew up for us over five years ago, mm -hmm. and we have several rental properties in the trust. Okay. The question is, the trustee wants to know, can the trust borrow money against the trust? Mm. Great question, and I think this is, as I've always mentioned, the one thing, and in fact, I mentioned it earlier in the program. It's the one thing that you cannot do with rent, with property in an irrevocable trust. You cannot borrow against it without resetting the clock. So if there if you guys are young enough and and you wanna and you say, you know what, I really need to borrow money to buy a new property, or I, I there's some real reason why I need to borrow the money, you won't be forbidden from doing it. But what you will need to do is you will need to get the property out of the trust, back over to you, and then you're going to need it to be, and there's some gifting involved here, and then you're going to need it to, to go get your mortgage, and then you can take it and put it back in the trust, but you're going to need to reserve a life estate in the property so that you preserve the mortgage. We don't want you to put it in the trust and then have them call the note. So they can preserve the mortgage by reserving a life estate in these properties, or if it's not your home, you do this thing called a 99-year lease. It's kind of weird, but you don't pay any bills. You just pay your real estate taxes, your utilities, your maintenance, your upkeep, and that's considered rent. But because it's a grantor trust, you can't pay rent to yourself, so you don't do anything. You ignore it. You just create this, this fiction. It's a 99-year lease if it's on rental property to prevent the mortgage from being called. So if you really need it, you can get it. And the other question I might have for you is, if on any of the properties that you have, you retained a home equity line of credit when we set it up, you could tap that home equity line of credit without disrupting anything, and therefore you'll have some money that you need or maybe want to, to spend on, on something. Are, are you planning on doing it because you want to buy another piece of property? No, no. We just want to remodel one of the properties. There are several rental properties, and one of the rentals, needs a little remodeling job, and if we kind of ran out of money from the trust, but uh, we just want, that was just a question. We didn't know if we could uh, go out and borrow, you know, ten or $15,000 off of the trust alone. If it's only ten or $15,000, I wouldn't bother. I mean, you got to have that somewhere outside the trust in an IRA, somewhere kicking around, and just use the money and fix up the house. I mean, that, that, that would be my thought. Um, again, it's, it's not worth disrupting your, your five-year waiting period over that. But uh, uh, check the engagement letter that I wrote for you as well. It might have some language in there about reminding you about how the borrowing situation works. But, yeah, no, no borrowing, but you can do it. have to take it out and, and uh, take it from there. So hopefully that helps. If not, you're certainly welcome to give me a ring off the air, and uh, I'll walk you through uh, whatever you need to uh, know to accomplish uh, your, your goals. So, folks, Great question, really, from Phil, because it does help us understand, one, real estate, and two, it's in a trust. But more importantly, when I talk about real estate, I talk about our guide, because so many of us, and like my discussion with Phil, I mentioned the word life estate. And 
People do them. People hear about them. They know about them. It's probably one of the most commonly used terms out there, and many people throw their homes into these life estate arrangements. So commonly used, but commonly misunderstood. There's pros and cons. We call it calculating the consequences of a life estate. You know, there's like three ways that that you set three times in which I set them up, the guide tells you. The guide tells you there's two ways to set it up, the right way and the wrong way, I like to call it, but the guide will explain it. It explains the pros, the cons, the tax issues. Folks, if you've ever done one, get this guide. If you maybe want to get out of one, get this guide. If you're thinking of doing a life estate, and they do have pros, they do work, learn how they work. Get the guide, 866-848-5699. Or LegalExchangeShow.com. Again, 866-848-5699 or LegalExchangeShow.com. Todd, we've got another one lined up for you. Let's go to John in Waterbury. John, what is your question for Todd Lutsky? Hi. If you write a will and you don't name an administrator and you don't want next of kin involved, is there who steps in and does it? Okay. Is there a state agency that does it? Yeah, so this is a, a common question, and I, and I always tell people this, but I, I, I really like the question because so many people, John, are somewhat, you know, perhaps like you in this situation, if it is you, where they'll say, well, what if we don't do anything? And I'm going to answer that. But I always tell people in, in my answer to this is, as much as a will is a won't, right? I like to tell people a will's a won't. It won't avoid probate. It won't protect assets from the nursing home. It won't help you reduce estate taxes. I mean, it really is a won't. But if you're going to do no planning, at least do a will. Now to your question, John, why? Why at least do a will? Because at least the will, while it goes to probate, will direct where you want your assets to go. So at least your wishes will be satisfied. And I think that's key because... If you don't do one, then there's this thing called an intestate succession statute. Each state has their own statute, and each state's statute is different. So please check with your state uh, when you're deciding to do or not do a will. So example, the state will say, and I'll just, it, it's really like a big Plinko board. You put the ball in there, and it drops down. It asks questions, right? So if you die, they say, did you die leaving a spouse? Yes or no? That's the first question. Because they're trying to find the next closest next of kin, right? You don't get to decide because you didn't tell anybody. So the first question would be, did you leave a spouse? If yes, then they ask, did you leave a spouse and kids? And that changes things, right? And this is critical because sometimes people think, well, I'm married. Everything will just go to my spouse. Not always, right? If if you don't have them, if you don't have your assets owned properly, and you say yes, I died, and then and then they ask the the, the estate, did you die with a with a, a spouse and kids? Then the answer is, depending on your state, like half might go to the kids and half might go to the spouse. So your spouse gets disinherited, and you didn't think that. Uh, I mean, granted, it might have went to your kids, and and that makes you feel good too. But I didn't want to disinherit my spouse. So really, be be mindful of that now. If, if you have no kids and just a spouse, well, then there'll be a different result. Probably more will go to the spouse. If you don't have either of those, where does it go? Well, they're going to ask you if your parents are alive. If your parents are alive, it's going to go up a generation to the parents. They're the next closest next of kin after those two. Well, that's horrible because now it's going to be taxed on the way up and it can be taxed on the way down again when they pass away and it could be subject to their nursing homes and it's generally leaving assets up a generation is not a great idea. What if there's no parents, which is more likely the case? Now we start looking at siblings and then from siblings, we look at nieces and nephews, right? So their kids and, and then if there's none of them, you start going down the line to cousins and, and so ultimately they're going to find your next closest next of kin. Who knows? You might not want it to go to them. And, and if you don't have anybody, well, then maybe charity. Think of charities, maybe leave it, leave it to a charity or something. But So, folks, that's how it works. Check your intestate succession statute. And my last comment is, if you're going to do nothing, at least do a will. I think it's better than nothing. Mr. Lutsky, thank you for joining us today. Always a pleasure.
This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutzke has been presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800-393-4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. A sound estate plan has many layers. In some cases, using a life estate can be a beneficial piece of your plan, but they also can be problematic. Call Cushing and Dolan, the experts in elder law, at 866-848-5699 and request their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. In it, you'll learn about the significant issues that life estates can cause including the possibility of losing control of your estate. Building the proper estate plan not only protects your assets from the nursing home, but also helps you avoid probate and potentially eliminates estate taxes. So be aware of the many problems life estates can cause before you create one. Call Cushing & Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online from their website, LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated.